Hello, and welcome to another episode of Forest Science Explorers. Today, we're going on a virtual field trip to the Wellington Discovery Forest near Bunbury, Western Australia. We're going to meet Brittany. She's a forest scientist called a forester, and it's her job to manage these forests so they stay healthy for the plants and animals that live here and for people to enjoy. Come with us now as we collect clues as to how this forest has adapted to grow in this unique region of Australia and how this science helps foresters like Brittany manage them for today and the future. And don't forget to look up and down and all around to help you find all the clues. Are you ready? Let's go. Hi, Forest Science Explorers. My name is Brittany and welcome to the Jarrah Forest of Southwest Western Australia. My mob, the Noongar people, have been living in these forests for tens of thousands of years. Welcome to country. Jarrah trees are the main forest tree species in Western Australia and are managed by foresters like me for a range of different reasons, including conservation, water, fire, and for recreation, such as camping and bushwalking. Jarrah trees can reach a height of 50 metres and a diameter up to 1.7 metres. They are only found naturally in the Mediterranean climate zones of southwest Western Australia that has mild wet winters and warm hot and dry summers. Jarrah forests are fussy when it comes to the soil where they grow. They grow best in lateritic soil, highly weathered by rain and as a result, very low in nutrients. Jarrah forests also grow in a region of Australia where there are frequent bushfires, droughts and an abundance of leaf-eating animals and insects. So how do they survive? Through clever adaptations. Let's go look for clues that will help show us. For clue number one, we need to find a young Jarrah tree. Can you see where Brittany is showing us the swelling at the base of the trunk? This special woody swelling are called lignotubers and they store food and energy. Lignotubers act like the life support system of these young trees and allow them to regenerate after damage caused from severe fire, drought and animals. If the young tree is damaged, the dormant buds of the lignotubers wake up and use their stored energy to quickly sprout back to life and grow new shoots and stems. Lignotubers are high value to Jarrah and other eucalypts living in these environments. How clever! For clue number two, we need to look at the Jarrah tree's bark and its colour, especially at the base of the trunk. Do you notice that the bark is black? This tells us that these trees have been through a fire event. But, as you see, the forest is healthy, giving us a clue that plants in this forest are adapted to survive fire. In fact, did you know, many of the trees and understory plants, like these Xantheria grass trees, can only complete their life cycles with the presence of fire, Jarrah too. As a fire burns through the forest, the understory plants are burnt away, creating a newly open and sunny forest floor. Smoke travels up to the tree canopy and triggers the Jarrah seed capsules to open and release their seeds to the ground below. When the rain next comes, these seeds germinate and quickly grow in the new sunny and nutrient-rich ash bed to help give them a good chance to outcompete other plants for food, water and light they will need to survive. For our last clue, number three, we need to look closely on the forest floor to find the home of a well-known wood-eating tiny insect that lives in this forest. I bet you know what they're called. Yes, you're right, they're termites. Jarrah trees have grown alongside termites for thousands of years and have adapted by producing chemicals that repel termite attack. So we've found all the clues. Can you remember how the Jarrah trees and plants in this forest have adapted to their environment? That's right, by being able to quickly regenerate using their energy storehouses found in their lignotubers and by making the most of a fire event by releasing seeds onto the nutrient-rich and now sunny ash bed. Finally, we learnt how they protect themselves from wood-eating termites by producing chemicals. How clever! But not all forests are the same. Can you find our Jarrah forest? What can you see that's different between this forest and others found around Australia? Can you think of why they might be different? That's right! 
because they grow in different environments and have adapted in different ways. So come and join us to explore other Australian forests and meet more forester friends and keep on exploring.